a couple of years ago, I used to work as a clinical physician mentor and a leader of a team which comprised of me, a nurse mentor, infection prevention mentor, and an IT specialist. We used to go for mentoring to a hospital which is about 200 kilometers away from where we normally work. And on one of our mentoring days, we were approached by a charming young lady who mentioned to us that she's a commercial sex worker and that she lives with HIV and has follow-up in the hospital where we normally work. But she said this time she's here looking for help. She said her workmate, who is also HIV positive, was, seeking f was feeling sick and uh, she wanted us to see her. We agreed and went to see her mate, whom we found in an apparently very bad ship. She had thrown up a couple of times, had diarrhea, had fever, loss of appetite, and was quite weak. After evaluating her, I had to run some laboratory tests, and we asked her if it's okay for her to go with us to the hospital to get those lab tests done. However, she turned our offer, mentioning that going to that hospital and letting people know about her status and what she do for a living will not only put whatever she does for a living, but also her life in jeopardy. Well, it didn't occur to me until that very moment that no matter how geographically accessible our health facilities are, no matter how affordable the services are, there will be that segment of the population, that marginalized segment which will never get to access it. This is a segment of the population which is not only stigmatized and marginalized, but also could be violently attacked or even criminalized for what they do or who they are. This is a population referred by the technical term as the key population. The key population encompasses commercial sex workers, IV drug users, men having sex with men, transgender women, and in some settings, prisoners and long-distance truck drivers. The conventional healthcare delivery model works in such a way that clients are expected to come to the health facilities themselves, which is not suited to this group of the population who suffer from the double stigma of what they do for a living and the disease they are living with. Hence, this calls for an innovative approach that's tailored to the needs of this segment of the population. In this talk today, I'm suggesting a model that can be piloted and put into action. It's a model that has been tried in some parts of Asia and was found to be effective, not only reaching this population and addressing their health issues, but also in empowering them and reducing stigma and discrimination towards them. This will be a community-based, targeted, peer-supported, integrated care delivery model. Uh, in this model, people will be trained, Mem tra members of this people population will be trained and will own their own clinics and serve as care providers along with the health professionals to address the needs of this population. The services will include HIV, hepatitis, and sexual transmitted infections, prevention and care and treatment, and also addressing reproductive health and mental health issues of this community. As a recipient of the prestigious Mandela Washington Fellowship of the year 2017, I'm using this opportunity to network with like-minded people who would like to work in this area, and also with those who have experience working with a similar project. I'm also here to engage partners and global organizations to support the cause, and I'm getting myself equipped with a leadership arsenals that I need to materialize this cause. Ladies and gentlemen, as a final remark, health is a human right, which every single one of us are entitled to get, regardless of who we are, whom we identify with, and what we do. However, my cause is even beyond ensuring that. It is about also about protection of human rights. It's about empowering fellow human beings to be able to self-express. It's about ensuring social justice and making sure no one is left behind.